Isn't this an interesting looking bangle? Let's see how you can make one just like it. First, I got chunks of happy colors. Check the video description for the list of them. I got all my chunks squeezed in my hand. Then I'm going to cut them in thick slices. Then I will add little pieces of black clay on a medium setting between them. I'm squeezing the log again, then I will slightly chop it some more. After which I'm slowly turning it into a very thick sheet. Pay a lot of attention to not have air between your chunks. Once my sheet is complete and about half an inch thick, I am slicing it in half on the thickness of it. Then I will run each sheet on a medium thin setting on the pasta machine. It was a 7 on a makings. Next I need a piece of scrap clay also on a medium thin setting just a tad thicker than the colored sheet. I ran it through a 6 on the makings. And now we will make a quite large Bargello. The Bargello polymer clay technique comes from the Bargello embroidery technique. Bargello is a type of needlepoint embroidery consisting of upright flat stitches laid in a mathematical pattern to create motifs. The name originates from a series of chairs found in the Bargello Palace in Florence, chairs that have a flame stitch pattern. A couple decades ago, artists figured out that this can be imitated using polymer clay and that it's a great way to use your scraps. The technique is very simple, you just cut strips from your colorful sheet and place them on a sheet of scrap clay with an offset. The offset is usually the same as the width of the strip you place. You place a few strips offsetting one way, then you start offsetting them the other way and keep going until you've covered all the area you need. But you will be left with some empty spots in the offset area. Let me show you how to cover those. You simply cut the extra that goes over the scrap clay sheet and move them to cover the empty space. It is very important to burnish properly after you got all the bargello set in place. 
For this, I prefer to use wax paper. And if you have the kind that it's waxed only on one side, make sure that you have that side facing the clay. I first use my fingers to push down any raised clay areas, after which I use the roller only in a rubbing motion and sometimes a small acrylic square. That helps tremendously in getting your surface nice and smooth. As a baking base, I'm using a tumbler with a diameter of 8 inches. I decided to have my bangle of 1 and 3 quarter inches width. I am cutting my clay sheet at only about 7 inches long, as there will be a bit of stretching when I place it on the baking plank. I am doing a diagonal cut on one end of the clay sheet and that is the end that I will be placing on the tumbler first. I then gently manipulate the clay until I have it perfectly fit the tumbler and I cut the other end also on a diagonal that goes the opposite way than the one on the other end so that the two ends can be conjoined seamlessly. Now all I have to do is to make sure that there is no air trapped between the clay and the tumbler. Also that there are no spaces between the strips of the Bargello. After which I check that the edges of the bangle are perfectly straight and I slightly bevel them using the roller. Once the bangle is perfectly set on the baking base, you need to use a crackle texture. I am using here a sax mat. You can find links in the video description on where you can get one, but you can use any other texture that is flexible enough to be wrapped around the bangle. Using my fingers, I gently press the texture into the clay.
The next step is to give it the look of mosaic, but a dimensional mosaic. To that effect, I am using embossing powder. I am using here a light gold embossing powder as I intend to place a light gold backing and edging on the bangle, but you can use any other color that would coordinate with the color of your choice for the backing and the edging. I first cover my bangle in embossing powder. I hit the tumbler a few times to let any unattached powder fall. Then I use packing tape to remove all the powder from the raised surfaces. Once that is done, it's time to pop the embossing powder using the heat gun. Be aware that the embossing powder will not pop out if you just put the bangle in the oven. It needs an abrupt, shocking change of temperature so that the minuscule vinyl particles that form the powder will get to swell up. The best is to set your heat gun on high, then wait for about 5 seconds for it to warm up, after which, with rapid sweeping motions, move the flow of hot air over the bangle surface for a few seconds until you notice the embossing powder changing color and popping out. Especially when you work with metallic embossing powder, the difference is very noticeable. The powder goes from a dull color to shiny metallic in a few seconds. I like to use a paring knife to remove my bangles from the baking base. If they seem to be stuck, slightly warm up your bangle and it will come off much easier.
For the backing, I chose 18 karat gold of Primo. If you don't have it, simply mix half and half regular gold and white pearl. I first pass a sheet through the machine until I obtain the mica sheen. Then I get my strip on a medium setting. Here I used a 5 on makings. Time for mica shift. I prefer to use the large texture sponge from the Cleo set, but you can use any texture you like. Once I got my mica shift, I burnish the backing sheet as well. Then I use bacon bond and attach the backing with about a quarter of an inch or 4 to 5 millimeters overlapping the edges of the bangle. Once the backing sheet is on the bangle and I made sure I have no trapped air pockets, I gently fold the excess clay over the edges of the bangle. Then I use the roller to bring the edge just slightly thicker than the surface of the bangle and I trim so that I have about 2 millimeters or 1 eighth of an inch of edging around the bangle on both sides.
I decided to apply a very thin varnish on the mosaic area. The best paintbrush to use for varnishing is a watercolor paintbrush of the kind named Mop. This will allow the brush to get filled with varnish so you won't need to dip it often when applying the layer and also will not leave streaks or air bubbles. Apply one or two layers of varnish depending on how shiny you want your bangle to be. The edges do actually need a bit of sanding before being buffed, but at this moment I still can't sand and buff for another 10 days or so after cataract surgery, so I will leave them as is for now. And this is it, a beautiful mosaic bangle. Don't forget to like, subscribe and share with your friends. And also click on the little bell button on my channel to be notified when I upload new videos or when I have a live broadcast scheduled. Happy clean!